One of the most common questions we get about grow lights is what type of light should I use for my indoor plants? In this video, I'm gonna break down grow lights the best way that I can and hope you get a better understanding of what type of grow light you should be using for your indoor plants. So as we get started talking about grow lights, I'm gonna cover a few different topics that'll hopefully help you better understand grow lights. Um, I have some notes here, so I'm gonna go ahead and look down uh, so I can go ahead and explain some of those things. Now, I'm gonna throw a lot of stuff out there that you may or may not understand, but hopefully, again, it helps you better understand the grow lights. Now, the light spectrum. All light falls on a spectrum. Indoor grow lights usually fall between 400 to 700 nanometers of, of wavelengths and light. And then you have uh, the blue and the red lights, which you may have heard those terms before, the blue uh, LEDs and red um, LEDs. Now, to better explain that, the blue LEDs, it falls between 400 to 490 nanometers, and that's basically to help your plants through the vegetative state. And then you have the 580 to 700 uh, nanometers, which mimics sunlight. Now, the light waves are also known as PAR. You may have heard the term PAR before whenever you look at grow lights or whatever the case is. What that actually means is photosynthetically active radiation. The keyword in there being synthetic, meaning it basically fakes sunlight for your plants and helps that photosynthesis happen in your plants. So the next topic we're gonna to cover, it's a real quick one, it's light intensity. The type of light actually does play a role in the intensity of your light waves, meaning if your lights are too close, it can burn your plants. And if it's too far, they may not photosynthesize the way they need to be. Okay, so moving on to the next topic, it's lighting footprint. Now, grow lights are designed to cover a growing area. A lot of these lights advertise, you know, a two square foot space or a three square foot space at three feet to about six feet high. Growing anywhere outside of that growing space, it's going to give you subpar results with your plants and you're not going to get what you need out of those plants. Okay, now talking about the actual grow light itself. Um, there's different types of grow lights. Uh, the most common is fluorescent and LED lights. That's basically what we're gonna talk about. First, we're gonna talk about the fluorescence. Now, the fluorescent light bulbs are the probably the most popular grow lights for beginners when it comes to seedlings, as it has the uh, the blue and white uh, spectrum are are very good for growing seedlings with those uh, with those bulbs, and it, it reduces any chance of your plants basically burning. I, from my understanding, with the fluorescent bulbs, you can literally sit a fluorescent bulb on top of uh, a leaf and it will hardly uh, show any type of burn in those plants. So very good for beginner growers. Um, and leafy greens do extremely well under fluorescent bulbs. So you can grow lettuce, uh, um, shards, anything that's a leafy green plant is gonna do extremely well under fluorescent bulbs. All right, now LEDs, probably right now the gold standard in growing and it's much cheaper to operate than any other grow lights out there. And the heat emissions are almost non-existent with these uh, with LED grow lights. Now, the great thing about LED grow lights is a lot of them have that full spectrum or a dual spectrum for uh, the vegetative and flowering stages like I explained earlier, the red lights and the blue lights. And they're also the great thing about LEDs is a lot of them are dimmable, which is a great feature to have when you have that seedling to full flowering stage uh, growth that you want in your lights. All right, now with both of these grow lights, you have the cooling and the heating. A lot of times these are not gonna produce much heat, so there's really nothing to worry about when it comes to he those lights heating up, burning your plants. Um, they usually stay pretty cool unless you have them in a grow tent. You're gonna have some of the excess heat build up inside a grow tent if you have a reflector in there or it's just a really dark grow tent that's gonna retain some of that heat. Then you wanna fan those lights to make sure that they don't burn out or cause any damage to your plants overheating inside any grow tents or anything of that nature. Um, and again, uh, just a real quick video trying to explain grow lights to people who have really no idea uh, what to get when it comes to getting a grow light for your plants. Um, now, the another question that pops up with the grow lights is, how much light do my plants actually need? Now, when you start off seedlings, these vegetative plants need almost 16 to 20 hours of light indoors to be able to mimic that the the wavelengths of the sun and i know that may seem a little bit excessive you know 16 to 20 hours that's a lot of time with the lights being on but your plants actually need that and then they do need that eight hour rest um, to be able to actually photosynthesize the right way 
um, because again, you're mimicking the sun and that word, the part, uh, you know, photosynthetically, synthetic meaning, you know, it's faking the sun. So it's gonna need a lot of time under those lights. So as we close this video, I think the, the number one question is, which light should I actually get from my uh, indoor plants? And to answer that question, uh, you could use any LED or fluorescent bulb. Um, naturally, plants are gonna do better with natural light. Uh, when you have an artificial light that's growing your plants, that's when it comes to looking at the intensity, you know, the, the, the footprint of the light and how it's actually gonna perform and you know, how it's gonna make your plant actually photosynthesize and do what it needs to. Now, when it comes to seedlings, uh, you're gonna wanna look at those grow lights that are specifically designed, again, with the red and blue to be able to have those stages of growth, the vegetative, and then, you know, some of that fruit producing or flower producing, if you do decide to keep them inside, a lot of commercial growers do have those types of lights because they do grow inside, um, you know, greenhouses or whatever the case is. Now, when it comes to indoor plants, as far as, you know, the, uh, you know, the begonias, the, the, the potos that you have inside, uh, some of the snake plants and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to those plants, it just depends on what type of plant you have and how much light it actually needs. We have a couple of plants around the house where we just have some regular LED lights on them and then some that don't have any light and just do well with the natural light that comes in through the through the window. Um, but again, th that question, it, it, it's a little bit difficult to answer because there's really no right answer for it other than, you know, try a light out, try, uh, see how that works for your indoor plants. If it's burning too much, then, you know, maybe not use that light. If it's an LED light, maybe you can dim it, maybe you can't. Um, but I think the answer to that question, like I said, again, is just to each his own is try something out. But again, with this video, I just went through a couple of topics to kind of help you better understand what grow lights do and some of the topics and terms that are thrown around with grow lights. You know, the best answer when it comes to grow lights is experiment. Uh, move those plants around, figure out what does best, uh, what works for your plant, what doesn't work for your plant. Uh, going back to talking about, you know, the ceilings, there's specific lights for that. And then for indoor plants, that's just all experimental, what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. But that's gonna do it. Uh, if you haven't given this video a like, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video.